Um, so I go by Ken, and I want to tell you what I mean by modular meaningful probabilistic inference, which is the main thing I've been working on. So I want to start by celebrating how great people are at reusing concepts. So if I tell you what it means to melt a clock, then you also know what it means to melt a laptop, uh, a human arm, an airplane, or an elephant. And I don't have to repeat to you what melting means in each of these contexts. So when the concepts we're concerned with are expressed as programs that we can run, again, repeatedly in different contexts, then computer scientists love it, and we call this modularity. So ideally, modularity is where just by changing a little bit of our code, maybe just in one file, a few lines, you produce behavior that's also just a little bit different conceptually. In other words, you want the conceptual distance, kind of like distances in the real world, to be similar to the distance in code, kind of like distances on a map. Unfortunately, when it comes to programs that handle probabilities, this is far from what has been achieved. Okay, so as you may know, a lot of scientists, engineers, and other people are interested in, first of all, describing a whole bunch of probability distributions and then asking lots of questions about them and answering those questions using a combination of techniques that have been built up over decades. So for example, here is a typical paper from, it turns out, the International Conference on uh, Not Functional Programming, Machine Learning, which is the other conference I go to. Um, and Section two describes a particularly interesting distribution, and then sections three and four says how we can answer questions about this distribution in an efficient way. Now, on paper, this is very nice. Section two is separate from three and four, and you can imagine doing different work based on site changes to section two, which are separate from site changes to sections three and four, but unfortunately, in the code, it's all mixed up. We cannot change what we want to do uh, inference on from how we want to do inference. Okay, so this is a fundamental difficulty that has uh, stymied a lot of research and uh, practice in terms of writing programs that compute with probabilities. So what is this difficulty coming from? Well, one way to understand this difficulty is to look at this classic base formula that you may be familiar with from some kind of elementary probability class. Okay, so this is kind of the foundation of probabilistic inference, or most of it. And if you look at it, there are lots of probability distributions involved, but there are also three binary operations that are used to relate those probability distributions. So the first operation is what looks like multiplication, but actually we're not multiplying numbers, we're multiplying distributions. So this is a slightly different operation. Some people call it bind. But also we have this division, or what looks like division. It turns out it's not quite division because we're dividing distributions. It's something else which is called disintegration. And thirdly, there's this equal sign, which in practice means that we have to take a program that's slow and turn it into a program that's fast that computes equivalent results. So in, uh, I call this simplification. Now, bind turns out to be easy. So in our group, what we've been focusing on is to implement disintegration and simplification on many distributions, including continuous distributions. Okay. So for those of you who like a little bit more detail, here is one example of how these distribution turn, uh, how these operations turn out. So suppose you have some distribution over something called A, and you have a probability distribution for B given A. In other words, it's a family of distributions, one line for each A, and each line is a distribution over Bs. Okay. We can multiply them to get a two-dimensional distribution, but moreover, often what we actually want to do is to then divide that two-dimensional distribution by another one-dimensional distribution to get an efficient way to compute another family of one-dimensional distributions, in other words, distribution of A given B. Okay. So what our group has done is to basically build a distribution calculator, a calculator for distributions that not only knows how to multiply, but also knows how to divide and equate. We've used this calculator to express both distributions and inference methods for distributions in a modular way without sacrificing performance. And what we've been doing now, and this is where you can come in, is to tell us how we should improve this calculator and also other places where we can apply this calculator. Thank you.